Right. Well, we're going to be talking about the cording foot. And as I said, that's cording foot for the baby locks and the piping foot for the bananas. Slight difference in name, but the same foot. And the reason I want to talk about the dangers of it is because it's a fabulous foot. It's a foot everybody should own because you can do so much with it. So let's start off at looking what, at what you can do with it. So the cording foot quite obviously makes cording. And let me just grab my jacket because it's right the other side. And the thing about cording is I hate doing it on a sewing machine. I really, really do because it's difficult to cover the initial stitches. I know you have to make it narrower and all that sort of thing. But on the serger, you can make cording and then use exactly the same setting and sew it in. And the result is that it completely covers the stitches because it sews in the same place. So basically, you can't mess it up. It is so easy. So you'll see a lot of cording in my projects because I think it just adds that panache. It just adds a bit more zing. This is a princess line, and you can tell that the cording really adds the shape into that jacket. Now, some other times when I've used cording, this is a t-shirt I made years ago, and I wanted a flash of color between the two fabrics. Now, to try and sew in a straight, well, not straight line so much, but a, a, an even, piece of, of fabric between the two fabrics is really almost impossible. But if you use the cording foot and the lightweight cording, do you see how perfect it is? It's all the same width. And that's another thing I like to do with it. It just, it just sews it. These are called peepers. When you add a little color like this into a knit, it's called a peeper. And I think it makes a big difference to the finished garment. That's one I did on a black t-shirt. And this is another one I've got. And I did it here. And the reason I did it here is because actually the stripe is more of a gray and green. And of course, the black is black. So by putting that red in, I took away, you know, you can't see so clearly that there actually is not a black, it's a dark gray. But super easy and a perfect, same width all the way down flash of red. So that's one thing I do with cording foot. I've said I make cording. And then the next thing is I sew in zippers. Now I have, this is actually a project for the club this week. See how we've sewn in a zipper? Do you see how it's the perfect distance from the edge of the fabric? And that's because the cording foot dictates. So you can't mess it up unless you get it wrong. So that's what I'm going to be showing you tonight, how not to get it wrong. And then this big bag, this is my Ahoy bag with a couple of dolls in the pocket. And this one I did actually using chain stitch to sew the zipper in. But I did use cording on this. And I think people don't always think of it. But can you see the cording? it's gold. And can you see there's a stitch running down beside it? Possibly not. But I used the cording foot with a chain stitch to put that decorative stitch in. And what the cord, I put the cording in obviously with cording foot, but I even added a decorative stitch. Can you see the gold next to the yellow cording with the red? So there's all sorts of things you could do with it that you don't always come to mind. But honestly, if you have a serger and you don't have that foot, got to go out and get it. And I'm not trying to make you buy. I'm trying to make you get the most out of your machines. So this is the P5 foot. And I'm going to do this in a slideshow just because I think it's easier to see what or understand what I'm saying. And here on the back is the groove where everything goes. Somebody asked, on your t-shirt, do you use cotton fabric for the cording? You can use a cotton fabric or you can use a knit. It doesn't matter. It won't make the slightest difference. It's just a little peep of color. Um, so yes, beautiful. I never thought to use a cording foot for a zipper. Honestly, Darlene, it is perfect. The only time I wouldn't use it is in garment making. In garment making, it's not such, 
it's, it's not so possible. Often we hide a zipper under a fly or something like that, or it's in the center of the back of a dress. And this isn't the time to use it. But if you're making bags or, or anything with a zipper, um, what do I have here? Oh, here, like the bird bag. See the zipper on that? That's all done with the cording foot. Um, it works a treat. And as I said, you can't, you can't not get it straight. I'm much better on the surge of putting in zippers than I am on the sewing machine. Right, so yes, that was what I wanted to say. So I showed you the baby lock foot, and I'm going to show you the slideshow in a minute, but here are the banana foot. The baby lock has two. It has a P3 and a P5. That's for three millimeter cording and five millimeter cording. And this is the smaller one, three millimeter. And you can see this one's a lot narrower. It is for a four thread baby lock, okay? And the Benina, it also, this is for the L890 because that's the machine I have. It has a see-through plastic foot, and that's the smallest one, which is three millimeter. That's the largest one, which is five millimeter. And then it has a whopping great jumbo foot, which I've never used yet, but I can't wait to try. But don't be too disappointed. You can still get quite big cording, even if you have just the five millimeter. So let's have a look. Will this video be on the group page? It keeps freezing up. Yes, it will. Don't worry. It, and that's the best way to watch it. If you're having trouble, um, come back and watch it when it's recorded. It's more stable. It will be on. It will be in my Deb Cannon Surger Sanity Projects. I'm also going to put it in the club, the, the online Surger Club group, because I want them to view it before they put their zipper in next week so that they know this information. Right. Yes, the, the extra large foot is awesome, Kathy. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the slideshow up and we will work through that because I want you to understand a few things. Whoops. I don't know. I want I want you to understand a few things about it just to make it easier. OK, great. It came in the right size. This is my lucky day. Right. So the dangers. That's, that's what I called it. It just gets your attention. So the, fo the cording foot, and I, and I say in here, you cannot own a serger and not have a cording foot. It aids you in putting in zippers perfectly and makes inserting cording and makes and inserts cording perfectly. So that's its two main roles, okay? So, and I've told you already that these two machines and any baby lot machine, any, any serger machine, will have this foot okay anyone so how does it work well you see the groove in the bottom of the foot it's a bit like a road and so it travels down the middle of the groove if you have cording that's a bit bigger than the groove then it's going to stick out of the groove a little bit and if you have cording that's a bit narrower than the groove it might shift around a little so be aware of that and keep it to one side of the groove The needle. So this is the bit I want you to understand, and this is why I've done it as a slideshow because it's just easier. So when you make cording, the needle needs to be really close close to the cording to make that nice cording that we like. Um, so here we have the foot, and you can see the groove at the very front. Can you just see the groove at the front of the foot? And you'll see the red line. The red line is my left needle my O1 needle, and the purple line is my O2 needle. So if we're stitching a piece of cording that's a fraction bigger than the um, groove underneath, we would be better off using the right needle because that would give it a little bit more room. Now, you might get away with using the O1 needle, the red path, but understand it could sew into the cording. And that may not be the end of the world, but it's going to matter when we come to zippers. So I wanted to point that out to you. So zippers, and this is this is where the biggest problem comes. Oh, you know what? I didn't show you. I didn't show you my, oh, I'll show you when we get to the end of the Actually, no, I won't. I'll come out and show you now because I want to give you an example of cording that's bigger. So for the cording, you know, I use the 
the medium foot, but I sewed this cording. And it actually, I used a fairly small cording here, so I did get a wide stitch on it. But if you use a thicker cording, I, that wasn't the bag I meant to pick up. This is the one I'm all tied up with cords. So on this one, I used a really thick cording. And it was so thick that I had to use a narrower stitch. Do you see that? So on this cording, I used a rolled rolled hem okay and i that and, I, and that's a narrow stitch obviously so that managed to fit my cording better because it moved it over to that right hand needle so that's why i want you to understand so with the bigger cording you're going to use a narrower stitch right let's go back to the thing so the thing about zippers is you buy a zipper and it's all about the teeth and they can be deceiving. I know that a number three zipper I can do a wide stitch with. But um, if you get those zippers on a roll, you think they're quite small, but actually the teeth are a bit bigger than you think. And the problem is that if you use a wide stitch on a zipper with slightly bigger teeth than a three, you're going to find it's going to stitch so close to the zipper that it's never going to open. Okay. And that is the problem. Judy says, do you have an example of the cord created by the Benina XL piping foot? No, I don't. I don't. I haven't actually got around to using that foot, but I will. I will. Did you use the five millimeter or the jumbo? I use the five millimeter because the baby lock doesn't have a jumbo. So I used the five millimeter and just used a narrow stitch. The cording was bigger than my groove. So the, it kind of sat on top of the cording. But using a narrow stitch, I was able to use it with the bigger cording. So let's talk about sports zippers because they have huge teeth. OK, if you're going to use um, something like a sports zipper, you're going to have to use a narrower stitch or you will sew into the teeth. OK, so if you have any doubts about the size of your zipper teeth, then just use a narrow stitch. Now, quite often I will use a wide stitch and I will mention it in a pattern, but I'm using a number three zipper. And I know when I do classes, a lot of people don't get a number three zipper. It is nearly always those ones that come on a roll. And um, they, even though they look small, are bigger than you think. So whenever I'm in a class or I'm teaching online, I will always, nearly always get you to do a narrow stitch, even if you could use a wide stitch, just because I don't want somebody to be disappointed. And this, this is the big one, okay? So imagine that you've got a three, okay, which will take a wider stitch. If you fail to open it when you sew in your zipper. In other words, if you leave your zipper closed, you have doubled the size of the teeth in the groove and it will not open, I can guarantee. OK, so that is the big mistake people make when they're using their cording foot to put in zippers. They either have too big a teeth for the wide stitch or, worst of all, they forget to open their zipper and they put two sets of teeth in there and that is just too wide. OK. Right. Let's see what else I have to say about it. Yeah, this is and this is something that oh, I, for ages it took me a while to work this one out. So you have to think on this. So would it make any difference if you widened or narrowed your stitch? OK. And I the reason I want you to understand this is this is what it's all about. So I've got three size three zipper and I know it will take a wide stitch but actually it's a little bit close to the teeth so if I narrow my stitch will that help no 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 it won't because think what happens when you narrow your stitch does the needle move no it's just the knife so it's going to narrow your stitch from the right but it's going to leave your stitch needle next to the zipper just as it would have done regardless of what width stitch you have okay so just understand that it's all about the position of the needle 
So if you want more room, then you're going to move your needle to the O2 position or the right needle position, and that will move the needle away from your teeth, your zipper teeth. Okay, does everyone understand that? Because that's the principle of um, what I was trying to tell you tonight. Right, so I'm just going to look at questions. When you buy a zipper, how do you know what size the teeth are? It's, you know, it, it's not something they always say. I do get a lot of my zippers from Warwack and they do have them in sizes. But if I go into Joann's or somewhere, they don't. But a regular dressmaking zipper is generally a three. And remember, you're always going to use plastic on the surgeon. Now, of course, it will have metal at the beginning and end, but you're going to avoid those. But just things to think about. So I, I've talked about the zipper and I've talked about the cording. If you've got bigger teeth or bigger cording, then you're going to use the O2 needle to stitch. If you have now smaller cording and smaller um, zip, zipper, then you can use the O1 needle. And that's the two choices you have, just which needle to use with the cording foot um, when using cording and putting in zippers. So I just I just think that was a good thing to understand. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to, I've got a couple of other things to show you. So I'm going to go back to the slideshow. So a lot of you are contacting me and saying you still want to join the online club, but it started. You can still join. You missed lesson one, which was the phone bag, which is on the left, but you can still do it. All the videos and recordings are there and if you do go into that group you click on featured and it will bring up the top post with all the videos I put in to help you with threading and things like that and it will also have the lesson and it will also mention all the written files that are in the file section so right now we're on lesson two next Monday and that's going to be a zippered bag and that is where we're going to put in a zipper and I'm going to put this live in there so they can watch it and make sure that they're aware that they're all going to use a narrow stitch. Because as I said, when I teach, I do that. But um, I want them to know the options they have with that. So that this video will go in there. And then, of course, we'll have our live. Um, we already have the threading for that in there. So um, you can still join it. It's on my website. It's um, $120 for six lessons. The the um, the idea of it is just once a month to make a project, but in that project there will be techniques. Okay, so I'm hiding the learning. So this is this week's one is the zipper, and we're going to do that rosette. And if you can't make the the day for the online. Surgery Club, it doesn't matter because it's recorded. So you can go back and watch it as often as you like. I mean, you know, I know this time of year, people are away some weeks and things like that, but it's there for you. And you can watch it as often as you want. So um, just a way to get you all sewing. When I started doing the lives, I thought that was it, that I'd encourage you all. But I realized you just sit and watch them. <laughs> So I wanted to really get you to commit to meet me once a month, so on the surger and learn, okay, and make some progress. And it's for beginners and advanced. There's some things um, the advanced people can pick up on and, you know, some variations they can add in. So that is the surger club. And then what's the next thing I want to... Yes, I am away this week. That means that if you email me or message me, I'm going to be slow to respond because I'm in class all day and I am going to Michigan on Wednesday and I'm teaching the day tote at the Muskegon store in Michigan. This is Lakeshore Sewing and I'm teaching the day tote on the 16th, the snazzy bag on the 17th and the robe on the 18th. And I think the first lesson is Muskegon, and then the next two are, um, whoops, I came out of it. The next two are the Wyoming store. Right, there's a couple of other things I want to share. I don't think there's any more slides. Let me just check. Nope, that's it. So I'll move that. Right. 
my video keeps freezing. I'm sorry, Barb. The best thing you can do is watch the recording. It's just more stable than the live. So, you know, you can go back and watch this recording anytime you like. So that may be your best option tonight. So, I yes, they are a wonderful store, Jan. Great people. I'm looking forward to seeing them. At, you know, at this stage in my life teaching, everybody's friends, you know. It's just I'm going back to see some friends. <laughs> so, somebody says, did I miss the online class that has the round bag? I can't remember the name. No, I haven't done a round bag. The only thing I've done on the store so far, on the club so far, is the phone bag. That's mine, which hasn't got a button. And next week, we'll be doing the zippered bag. And then the week after, that secret. But I know, I know what I'm doing. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I wanted to show you that because I've been stuck home and I haven't been allowed to go swimming or play tennis or do any, anything I normally do, I got on with my Bloom and Grow quilt, which is a um, design by Amanda Murphy from Benina, worked with Pam Marshy, a good friend of mine. And I have done it exactly as they did it i've just chosen my own colors you can see i'm looking around i can't find it i have actually got to the stage where i'm quilting it and the great thing about it is amanda tells you how to quilt it because that'll make it go a lot more quickly because if i'm left to choose then i dither around trying to decide how to do it not that i've got any great skills but i still dither around so i'll show you it's going to be impossible to show you the whole thing in one picture because of course it's it's actually much bigger than I thought. So let me just grab it and I'll, I'll show it to you in sections, but I, I am pleased with that. I think it's real fun. So let me move my chair. Right, I'm gonna show you the bottom first. So the bottom starts with the triangles at the bottom and then it goes up to flying geese. And then the next section is wonky log cabin now that was right up my street because i can do things like that this is the flower going up the side here it's catching on something so yeah so that's the wonky log cabin and then it goes up to some bow tie i hope you're all impressed that i know these terms see and then it it goes up to one I did do slightly different just because I had so much color in there. I put a color, different colors on there rather than one color. But you can see my flower. Hang on. My flower's over here. There's the flower. And then the last one's real sharp too. It's, um, no, I'm lost on this one. I can't remember what this is, but it's nice, isn't it? It's sort of um, triangles and things. <laughs> no, it's it's strips, whatever. I forgot the name of that one. But I just used fabrics I had. Of course, I have a lot of fabrics. And you'll see I used a lot of solids. And I, I used a lot of solids really just to try and keep the shape of some of the um, pieces in there. So um, I'm going to do a whole live on this when I've finished it. I'm going to, obviously, obviously I'm going to find it on the serger because I know no other way. Oh, I, I didn't show you my plant pot. So using that colors at the bottom go well for my plant pot. So yes, I said I'd show that to you. I actually did get it, the top finished, and I am halfway through quilting it. So it's amazing. And I had all I want to tell you is I have had so much fun doing it. It's a great pattern. You can do it on any machine. It is bigger than I thought. Somebody said, great job on the quilt, but I like your shirt. I bought it at Chico's. Okay, you just completely deflated me. <laughs> I often do make my shirts, but when this was, these were linen shirts, and I thought, hey, they'll do me nicely. Do you have a class where you're teaching binding a quilt on a surgery? Yes, I absolutely do. It's called Creative Bindings. You'll find it on my website store, and it is... Um, it's a recorded live and it it's really good. It includes putting bindings in with cording, with with um with uh, flashes, is that the word? Something like that. And um using the beading for it. It's it's just an all in all good um good class. It's not hugely long.
Somebody said it's interesting to listen to you talking about quilting last time. You truly seem to enjoy quilting creativity. If you mean quilting on my mid arm, I love it. I love it. It's my Zen place. I have no idea what I'm doing most of the time. I've, I've actually watched lots of lessons and I, I can't decide whether to be madly creative with it or beautifully, you know, perfect with it. The, the quoting on this is is more perfect stuff, but um, I kind of like that. But I really, you know, I really bought it because I wanted to draw some pictures. I wanted to, I, I like drawing and I thought I'd get a lot of fun out of drawing on a mid -arm. And I just haven't had enough time to use it, but I absolutely love it, yes. Are the seams thick to quilt? No, no, I never understand. You, you know, it's a whole different conversation, but let me say this. When, when people stopped hand sewing and started making quilts on the sewing machine, I'm sure they had a lot of um, questions about it and concerns about it and possibly thought it wouldn't do it as well as hand sewing. And I, I, I think a lot of quilters believe that the sewing machine is the only thing. Um, it's, it's the traditional, as far as, as short a tradition as it has really, of making quilts. But I'm going to make a statement here. I think in, in 10 years, everybody will be using a serger. Um, a lot of a lot of that quilt I've used chain stitch as per the pattern. I absolutely love it. If I've made a mistake, it's not quite perfect. I just pull a cord and it comes out. Um, as far as my seams, I locked all my seams when I use chain stitch, so it doesn't come undone. Um, using three thread overlock to sew up my blocks and things was perfect. It's so easy to get that measurement on the serger and don't forget it's a straight stitch machine so got all those feed dogs working for it it's perfect um as far as thickness is no there is no thickness no thickness at all and um i pressed you know so but i will tell you it was fantastically neat on the back so those are some of the things to think over but you know the other thing i did I used my differential feed when I was sewing some of my bias stuff together because I felt it was stretching a fraction. So, you know, I just I just think that eventually, you know, it's, it's one of those things you're going to upset people if you say the surge is great for making quilts. I've, I've got a quilting friend who she just about faints every time I mention it. And but the thing is, give it a go. Give it a go. See how easy it is to sew straight lines. Um, just give it a go, okay? It's it's. I think you'd be blown away, and I think a lot of people would be. And it's it's fast, straight, accurate, all those things. So let me just move that. But the quilt is a lot bigger than I thought too. So where can you get this pan? Any of your um, Benita dealers will have it. Yeah, I like my colors, Roberta. I, I had a little wobble at one stage, but they, they always work. Oh, Joan, Jill's had a hip replacement and she's lost her mojo. Make you happy sewing. It's just good for the soul. It keeps you keeps you thinking about good things. Okay, um, get back there. It will be good for you. Yep, Donna, quick rip out. I'm just reading the questions. I know I've gone quiet. Yes, Janice, the um, differential feed does help with the bias. It also helps when you're stitching a decorative stitch on the edge of a piece of fabric, which is invariably biased as well. So um, just a very useful thing. Yeah, I do have a pattern for a serger quilt. Okay, 
it was done with a jelly roll. Yeah, you know, the only thing I would say, and I, I did read somebody the other day saying they've made it and they had trouble with the chain stitch. Don't forget to lock your stitches and you quilters don't cut the thread chains, okay? They will get sewn in and then they will get cut, but don't cut them before you, um, because they're locking your chain stitch on. So I think that's all for tonight. Next week, I am doing Surgery Club all afternoon, so I won't be doing a live in the evening. Um, but I will the week after because I'm home. So did I miss the surgery foot? The surgery foot was the um, cording foot. And if you go back and watch the beginning, it was the first 20 minutes or so. Best technique for locking seams. If you're using chain stitch, create a thread chain in front and behind. In other words, when you come off, it's only actually going to undo easily from when you come off. But I've seen it come undone at the top, too. So if you create a thread chain, a, a chain stitch thread chain, uh, both before and after, you will lock your stitches on. So what would be the best stitch to quilt to quilt using Minky? I've done a video on using Minky. Look in my lives. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> That's my trouble. I watch my own lives because I can't remember what I do. Oh, May the 27th is a holiday. You're still going to do a live then? No, not if it's a holiday. I will get in on the group and tell you when I'm going to do it. I'm actually having new windows in then too. That's probably not a good time. So yes, I will get back to you and tell you. It'll probably be the week after if that's a holiday. Okay, you all have a fabulous week. I'll see those of you in the online club next Monday. And I'll see you good people in Michigan this Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And I'll see my friend Donna too. So that's a bonus. Where do you find where do we find your lives? You're you are watching this at this time because you're not watching this live. You are in my on my page, Deb Canham Studio, Surge of Sanity. Okay. If you look at the top, there's a menu and it has, I don't know what it has, but it I know it has videos, <laughs> photos, videos, something like that. If you just go into that, it will bring up all my past lives. There's well over 100 in there. Um, and then sometimes I get them onto my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel is Deborah with an H, Canham. And I do intend to get them all up there when I get a chance. But right now, you'll find them on this page. Okay, see you next week for the club people and soon after that for the others. Take care. Thanks for being here and joining me. Good night.